Welcome back to the Hawkeye Garage. I am Joe. Uh, this is an extra video for all of you, uh, not my normal Sunday upload. We're going to start doing some Wednesday evening uploads about mountain bikes. Uh, always have loved biking uh, my entire life. Recently, well, this last summer, I got really uh, back into mountain biking and uh, started doing some modifications on this Diamondback uh, XC bike that I had. My first brand new bike I ever bought um, and once I started getting into mountain biking well you all know it's a rabbit hole and one thing led to another one bike led to four and it's time to thin out the herd I've already gotten rid of one and this is next on the chopping block before I got rid of it I thought I'd make a video showing you all an overview of some of the cheap and easy mods uh, you can do to a really a beginner mountain bike to get the most out of it and to completely change the way it rides and to improve your overall experience with the bike. Stay tuned. Real quick, this bike is five or six years old. I'm not entirely sure. It's about a medium sized frame. This bike really was probably one of the last years that introductory level bikes, I'm gonna use that term to kind of call this bike what it is. Um, before they really started putting sizing on frames, small, medium, large, and everything, and before they switched to 27 and a half inch tires, or even now 29 inch tires, on entry level bikes. This is still 26 uh, inch uh, wheels. But it rides much better than that now, and I will tell you why in a bit. Uh, it started life as a 21 speed, a three by seven drivetrain with mechanical disc brakes. It has cables instead of hydraulic. It doesn't use fluid. And that was pretty much it. It had some Kenda tires on it, which was pretty cool, but they were 2.1s, so they were pretty narrow. And I really, really liked this bike. But it was time to do some upgrades on it to get the most uh, out of it. And I really did. I kind of, I'm sad to see it go, but I have some better stuff now, I guess you could say. And uh, it's going to be a great bike to whoever picks it up next. So let's take a quick walk around and talk about what I've done to the bike. First off, I've uh, added some 780 mil handlebars with a 35 mil rise. This bike is by no means a quote unquote modern geometry bike. So the rise helps out with the, your seating position and uh, a little bit of angle on uphill and downhill stuff. Just makes it more comfortable and makes it a little bit more agile. If you've never gone to a 780 mil bar, uh, I would definitely try that. If you're on narrow bars, I would go wider. It's a fantastic um, feeling. You're much more stable, it's easier to steer. And it's just a, a great uh, improvement, completely changes the overall uh, dynamics of the bike. Next, another thing that really can change the feel of your bike and how it handles is the tires and the tire width more specifically. As you can see here, I've got some Vittoria Goma tires. These are not tubeless tires. I didn't go through with the whole conversion on that. But these are 26 and 2.4 width. Going from a 2.1 to a 2.4, man, what a huge uh, difference that made. The bike felt more stable, felt more agile. It's easier to ride wheelies and do manuals on. It just, it rides so much better. It's um, obviously got more cush uh, to it, uh, depending on how much air pressure you run. These tires are great for trail riding. Uh, they've been good on concrete too, for just going on bike rides with the family. Good on gravel around the campground and pretty much everything in between. So highly recommend these tires. Also, I kind of upgraded the fork a little bit. This is a Marzocchi Bomber fork. This actually came on my giant full suspension uh, bike that I picked up used. I've got a video somewhere floating around on that. This is still a single spring, 100 mil travel fork, and it definitely is by no means light. Um, still pretty heavy duty. Uh, but whatever spring is in this is so much better than the really bottom of the barrel sun tour fork that was on this. So I, I uh, trimmed that down to fit uh, the, the steer tube uh, and put that in there. It rides way, way better. And of course, 
I went ahead and converted this to a one by drivetrain, meaning it has a single sprocket up on the crank and in this case, nine sprockets on the back. So it's a one by nine drivetrain right now. One by drivetrains on mountain bikes are, are where the industry is right now for standards, even on lower end bikes. A Shimano setup, I upgraded the derailleur to a Shimano Dior rear derailleur. This is not clutched because it's still a nine speed. That is a phenomenal derailleur. Uh, real simple uh, Shimano Atlas uh, Altus uh, shifter up front and it has indicators on it uh, so you know which gear you're in. I really, really like that. This wheel did not have a free hub on the back to begin with, so you can't really change the cassette. Uh, the cassette is the unit of sprockets back here. Uh, you couldn't really change that out to any different arrangement, so I went ahead and unlaced the wheel. I took all the spokes off, took the hub off, got a new hub that had um, a free hub, which uh, allows you to change uh, the cassettes. Lace that all back up, which is not intimidating at all. Uh, if you are mechanical enough to work on your own 4x4, work on your own bikes, find a YouTube video. It is a little tedious, it takes a little bit of time, but clean up the wheel, get you a screwdriver, sit in your living room floor in front of the TV, watch a video, take your time. Um, you don't need any special tools, you don't need the special uh, spoke wrench or anything. Just get them uh, finger tight, maybe tighten them down another quarter turn with a screwdriver, and take it to your local bike shop and they can finish setting that up. That's what I did, it cost me $23 after I put the hub in and now I can change or whoever buys the bike can change the cassette to whatever arrangement they want really. Down on the cranks here, I left the cranks the same uh, because I was able to just change the, uh, the three sprockets on there to a one sprocket. This is a narrow wide meaning that every other tooth on the sprocket is either narrow or wide and that helps keep the chain on. Um, a little bit better and this is also you might be able to tell an oval chain ring it's barely just ovaled out and that actually uh, helps physics uh, with your pedal stroke to more evenly apply uh, torque to the drivetrain depending on where you're at in your pedal stroke. Upgraded the pedals we've got some um, race face Chester knockoff pedals here now Chesters are not expensive at all, um, and normally with something like that, I would just buy those. In fact, I have. I have two pedals on uh, two other bikes that I have, but these are the Fuker, I think is what the brand is, um, and I just had to buy a set of these because they have crazy good reviews. They're like $22, and I had to compare them, and build-wise, they look pretty much exactly the same. Uh, now that I can't speak to like the construction and the chemistry of the polymer that the, the actual pedal is made out of and the kind of alloy um, that the steel is made out of and how it's made but they have good bearings uh, good studs on the pedals and they've been good for my testing around here and like I said they have thousands of really awesome reviews on Amazon so I went with those on here just because I wanted to try them out uh, when I converted to the one by drivetrain, I needed to change my shifters. My brake levers and shifters were all one unit, so I just picked up a brand new set of these Tektro mechanical brake levers. Really inexpensive. They're 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 great. Uh, they work fine. And while we're up here, I also changed out the stem. This had a really long stem on it. It's got a little bit of an angle up on there again to help with your seating position and overall um, riding angles and makes the riding experience a whole lot better. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Check out Sunday videos for more 4x4 stuff usually, the GX right now, and on Wednesdays for the next few weeks doing some bike stuff and hopefully we'll gain some traction there and I'll be able to continue doing the bike videos because I love biking right now and uh, hopefully we'll continue to do so. Check out the links down below for Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give the video a thumbs up. Turn on those notifications. Comments, questions down below. And feel free to email me, hawkeyeskunkworks at gmail.com. Until next time, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.